Welcome back to another video. It's your favorite math professor here, Dr. Tarsia Hubert. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to find the confidence interval for a population proportion, okay? So still talking about confidence intervals, and here is a formula for finding the confidence interval for a population proportion. So suppose that a simple random sample of size n is taken from a population, or the data are the result are the data are the result of a randomized experiment. A blank percent confidence interval, 1 minus alpha times 100% confidence interval for P is given by the following quantity. So you find the lower bound by doing your sample proportion minus your critical value times your, this is the standard deviation of your sample proportion. And then for the upper bound, you do your sample proportion plus your critical value times the square root or times your standard deviation of your sample proportion, which is the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat divided by n. All right. And know that two things have to be satisfied in order for us to be able to use these formulas. And that is, it has to be normally distributed. And these two properties have to be met in order for us to know if it's normally distributed. n times p hat times 1 minus p hat has to be greater than or equal to 10. And then the sample size has to be less than or equal to 5% of the population, the total population, all right? So let's also look at the margin of error. This is how you would calculate that margin of error for a 1 minus alpha times 100% confidence interval for a population proportion. Your margin of error E is going to be equal to your critical value times your standard deviation of your sample proportion, all right? This is the part that you're adding and subtracting to your sample proportion, okay? So this part right here is your margin of error. So now let's look at an example. In the parent teen cell phone survey conducted by Princeton Survey Research Associates International, 800 randomly sampled 16 to 17 year olds living in the U.S. were asked whether they have ever used their cell phone to text while driving. Uh -oh. Of the 800 teenagers surveyed, 272 indicated that they text while driving. Obtain a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of 16 to 17 year old students who text while driving. Alrighty, so have you ever texted while driving? And these are 16 to 17 year olds. That means they're amateur drivers as well. So not only are they amateur drivers, they're texting while driving. All right, that's just a little side note. And so what we want to do is we want to calculate the um, confidence interval for the proportion of 16 to 17 year olds who text while driving and so what i have here is that critical value table and since we're using a 95 percent confidence interval according to the critical value table our critical value is 1.96 so we want to keep that in mind that our critical value is 1.96 all right so first we need to calculate our sample proportion which is going to be p hat. All right. p hat. Uh oh. My pen isn't working. p hat is equal to, it's going to be the number they said they texted while driving, 272 divided by 800. So that is going to be our sample proportion. And when you divide that out, you actually get a total of. 272 to divided by 800 that comes out to be 0 0.34 so that's our sample proportion all right next thing we need to do is calculate our margin of error okay our margin of error is e and that's equal to our critical value which is 1.96 times our standard deviation. And our standard deviation is the square root of p hat, which is 0 0.34 times 1 minus p hat. Now 1 minus 0 0.34 is 0 0.66. And all divided by n, which is our sample size. And in this case, our sample size is 800. And that's where this 800 over here came from two when we did the p hat it was a 272 out of the total that was surveyed which is 800 that's our n all right 
So if we multiply all of that out, we do. I would do the 0 0.34 first times the 0 0.66 divided by 800, then take the square root of that and then multiply that by 1.96. We end up getting our margin of error to be 0 0.328, but if we round it out, we get 0 0.033 to three decimal places. So our margin of error is 0 0.033. So now we can find our confidence interval. So we would do our p hat plus or our minus first, our p hat minus our margin of error to our p hat plus our margin of error. And so that would be 0 0.34 minus 0 0.033 and then 0 0.34 plus 0 0.033. All right, if you subtract that out, 0 0.34 plus 0 or minus 0 0.033, you get 0 0.307. And then if you do 0 0.34 plus 0 0.033, you get 0 0.373. All right, and that will give us our 95% confidence interval, all right? That's how we would calculate it. Now, what does all of that mean? Here is a verbal description of what that means. We are 95% confident that the proportion of 16 to 17-year-olds who text while driving is between 0 0.307 and 0 0.373. So if you look at those as percentages, about 30.7%. And between 37.3 percent. Alrighty, let's look at this same example, but this time instead of doing a 95 percent confidence interval, let's do a 99 percent confidence interval. And we want to see how does changing the confidence interval affect the margin of error. Okay, remember the margin of error determines how big your interval is. So if we look at our critical values table, the margin of uh, level of confidence 99 percent will give us a critical value. A 2.575 alright so our critical value is 2.575 and so what we want to do is find that margin of error using our new critical value so remember our margin of error is equal to the critical value so our critical value now is 2.575 times the square root of p hat our p hat doesn't change it's still 0.34 times 1 minus p hat is still 0.66 divided by n our n hasn't changed it's still 800 so now if you multiply that out 0.34 times 0.66 divided by 800 take the square root of that and multiply it by 2.575 you end up getting your margin of error now to be 0.0 or 0.043 and so what has happened is that our margin of error has increased because when it was 95%, it was 0 0.033. But now that it's 99%, our level of confidence is 99%. It has increased our margin of error, which has made our interval wider because we will add a bigger number to our sample proportion to get our confidence interval. All right. So there are a few takeaways we can get from this and... One is a higher level of confidence leads to a wider interval, all right? So when we went from a 95% to a 99% confidence, level of confidence, then the interval got wider because the margin of error increased. In other words, another way to say that, the level of confidence increases the margin of error, okay? And then also increasing the sample size in decreases the standard error. Now, we didn't look at an example of this, but this happens. When you increase your sample size, your standard error decreases. So the margin of error decreases, all right? So as the sample size gets bigger, your margin of error decreases, which means your interval gets, your confidence interval gets smaller. So another way of saying that is that means that larger sample sizes will result, will result in narrower confidence intervals, confidence intervals, all right? And so this is how you would construct your confidence intervals. This is how you would construct your confidence intervals for um, your population proportion, all right? If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and 
Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.